Hello, today we have Paul Mann, CEO of ASP Isotopes, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker ASPI. Paul, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Craig. Great to be back. Great to have you as always, Paul. Now, could you start by telling us about ASP Isotopes and the significant milestones the company has achieved over the past year? Yeah, thanks. Yes. So yeah, we're an isotopes company incorporated in the United States, but most of our operations are in South Africa. And over the last two years, we've built two isotope enrichment facilities here. We'll start producing free cash flow around the middle of this year, so you know, any month now. And uh, we've signed a lot of contracts with customers, and uh, we're really looking forward to solving some of the global supply chain issues in isotopes. Isotopes are one of the most challenged supply chains of any chemical in the world. 85% are produced by Russia, the other 15% by Europe, and there's no domestic production. So we're excited to become the first US and richer of isotopes and supplying US customers with these very special chemicals. You know, Paul, it is remarkable for how many industries isotopes are critical. Now, how does ASP Isotopes plan to stabilize or even enhance the isotope supply chain, especially considering these current geopolitical tensions? Yeah, well, as I said earlier, most isotopes are supplied by Russia, and you know, Russia and, and Europe can only produce heavy isotopes. We can enrich light isotopes as well. And so, you know, take for example quantum computing, advanced semiconductors, and artificial intelligence. You know, to make the, to make faster semiconductors, the world's going to need highly enriched silicon 28, and that's exactly in our wheelhouse. That's a perfect isotope for us to enrich. And so, you know, last month or so, we've signed a, a contract with a a US uh, semiconductor company to supply them with highly enriched silane. And we're talking to three other customers right now for similar other products. And uh, you know, things like that, you know, nuclear medicine, the world's looking for new, new, uh, new isotopes in nuclear medicine. There's no Western or domestic producer of many of these isotopes, and we're here ready to help them. So actually, you know, rather than us having to find a market for our isotopes, the market's actually come to us and asked us, can we supply these isotopes? Paul, with the recent financial achievements highlighted in your annual report, including a strong cash balance and successful capital raises, how is ASP Isotopes positioned to accelerate growth in the current fiscal year? Thanks, yes. Yeah. So, you know, what's been interesting is that, you know, we've had many investors come to us asking to invest in our company. Uh, and, you know, that's very unusual you know, compared to most companies where you have to go and look for investors. And so with the, with the financial resources we have available now, we can accelerate many projects. You know, one of those, for example, is Euterbium-176. So Euterbium-176 is an isotope used for the treatment of cancer, prostate cancer. Novartis has a drug, uh, the Pluvicto it's called, uh, that treats prostate cancer. And during the clinical trial, 5% of the patients died because they couldn't make the drug in time for them. Even today, I'm told patients are waiting two months to get onto the drug and you know, two months may not seem like much, but when your median survival is 12 months, two months is a long time. So our goal is to get Euterbium 176 to, to the world you know, as soon as possible, maybe 2025 or maybe later this year. And, and that'll, you know, that'll really, really, really change the lives for a number of patients. And that's one of the projects we've accelerated because of the, uh, because of the assistance of investors over the last 12 months. Now, Paul, you recently started constructing your first quantum enrichment facility. What can you tell our viewers about this initiative? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the projects we accelerated because of the recent financings. And, you know, Euterbium 176, as I mentioned earlier, is the first product that will use quantum enrichment, which is a laser technique developed by a scientist during the 80s and 90s here in South Africa. So we've accelerated that project by a couple of years. And, and the, the, the financial rewards of that program will be huge. It's also the first step of other laser projects, such as HALU, or High Assay Learn Rich Uranium, Lithium-6, Lithium-7, Nickel-64. Many, many isotopes the world is desperate for, and there's no Western producer of them. So Euterbium-176 is the first of, of many similar plants we expect to build over the next several years. ASP Isotopes signing several major agreements recently. Paul, talk to us about the significance of these contracts. Yeah, so during the second half of last year, we signed two MOUs 
with two large SMR companies in the US that require metric ton quantities of HALU, highest they low enriched uranium. You know, there, you know, the value of those could be could exceed thirty billion dollars. Obviously, they're 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 blue, they're, you know, they're they're kind of blue sky numbers, but more recent and near term events. You know, we've signed a contract recently to supply silicon twenty eight to a U.S. semiconductor company, and this silicon twenty eight is going to be required to make faster semiconductors. When you remove the twenty nine isotope from silicon, you know, the heat conductivity increases by by multiple folds and the conductivity, the transfer of information increases by thousands of folds. And that's how we get faster semiconductors, cooler semiconductors. And the world's facing a real challenge right now to make uh, faster semiconductors and semiconductors that can be used in, in data centers that require huge amounts of heating. And so there's a lot of excitement in Silicon 28 for those purposes. If your kids want faster computer games, they need Silicon 28. You've been talking about HALU, Paul. It's very important for those next generation nuclear reactors. Projected demand, probably going to be great. What steps is ASP Isotopes taking to become a leader in the space? Yeah, so, so HALU is one of the isotopes I'm more excited about, actually. Higher say, low enriched uranium. That's a new form of nuclear fuel. And there is no Western producer of HALU today. Um, you know, the world is in desperate need of a new supplier of HALU. And, um, and hopefully we'll come and supply and find, find a solution to this, to this problem. Um, so what are we doing to solve the problem? Well, first of all, we're talking to very well capitalized uh, companies in the US with large balance sheets who want to use their balance sheets to help us bring them HALU. So rather than requiring free money from governments or government grants, we've gone straight to the people that need it who are better capitalized, quite frankly, than governments. So they're prepared to put millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, into building plants. Secondly, we started a research program, which has been funded by one of the US SMR companies, to start doing the plant designs for this project. And by the way, I would add that's probably, I can't think of any other SMR company or nuclear company that's ever invested in a research project for enrichment before. Most, most nuclear companies try and, try and avoid enrichment, but here they are getting involved because of the desperation and the need to get there. And finally, we're talking to three governments. We need a government permit to, to build a plant or government, government permission to build a plant, enriching a uranium plant. You know, building a uranium plant is not like building a plastic pellet plant. So it takes a bit more government processes. So we started those discussions with three governments. And hopefully, during the next sort of several months, we will get clarity on where our first plant's going to go. And I'm really excited about bringing that news to the market when we're able to bring it. Now, Paul, tell us, as economically as you can, what is the essential value proposition and why should an investor take an interest in ASP isotopes right now? Yeah, so the world's at an inflection point where it needs new isotopes that aren't available from any other producer. And the isotopes that's been supplied have come from Russia or the rest of the world. And we're coming along as a new supplier of isotopes. Our technology allows us to, to generate a significant return on capital on any plant we've built. And we're right at the verge of starting to produce new isotopes and generate free cash flow for our shareholders. And hopefully that should result in a significantly higher share price. That's a very exciting story, Paul. Thank you for sharing it with us today. Thank you, Craig.